Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Friday. Let's talk some mountain weather and the final storm system of this cycle is now exiting Colorado, but it deposited some nice snow. This is Aspen snow mass up there. So they're reporting anywhere from eight to 10 inches of new snow in the last 24 hours at snow mass. Um, up to Aspen Mountain. So awesome to see that steamboat reporting a foot winter park four or five inches. So it's going to be a great day uh, in the mountains of Colorado. Here's radar across the west and uh, just a little bit of tiny snow up there. All the action is exiting Colorado. So there's an area of low pressure down here and that's what was uh, sort of forcing the development of snow across I-25 in the, the uh, Denver metro area. Um, and also was uh, responsible for that snow up over the mountains. Well, the whole low is going to start to slide and sort of pivot away from Colorado, pivot away from New Mexico, and then run out into the plains. And that, guys, is going to be the end of it because then it's high pressure uh, building into a lot of the west. Let me show you satellite. So here's water vapor satellite imagery. The whites and the blues, that's where you're going to find the moisture. That's the action. There's our low pressure that will be exiting. Then, you, of course, this probably grabs your attention. This big area of low pressure up here with this big comma shape, well, that's not moving into the western part of the United States. That's actually going to move up here into parts of British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest. And that will likely bring heavy precip up there and maybe into parts of Washington State in the high Cascades, but it's also going to move in a lot of warm air. That's going to push the, uh, the rain snow lines up here uh, in the Pacific Northwest between the 11th and the 12th and the 13th, the potentially seven, 8,000 feet at times. That's how warm it's going to get uh, because of that storm system. And it will likely push warm air into a, a lot of the Intermountain West. But it just it's, it's the fact that it's going to go up here and not in here. That's the bottom line. The whole storm track is shifting. And essentially what we're going to find is a big high pressure that will take over. Uh, a lot of the West. So bullet points. Let's talk about what all this actually means. So this was the final storm system of this cycle. And there's your high pressure 110 to 115. Now on the outer edge of this on 116, I will say that it may turn a little more active Montana, Wyoming, Colorado around 116, maybe 117. But even that possibility is trending quite a bit weaker at this point. And I'll show you that coming up. But um, there's your warm uh, air that's going to hit the Pacific Northwest with, again, those high rain snow lines, 111, 12, 13. And this really tells the unfortunate story here. The 15-day snow, I've got nothing for Mammoth. Two at Vail, that's it for the next 15 days. Snowmass, two, that's it. Park City, nothing. Alta, nothing. That is really unusual to, to say that. I mean, and look at these best odds of snow. Guys, there's, there's no, where I, where I don't have dates, there's no snow potential for the next 10, 15 days. I mean, there's a little bit in Colorado happening um, this morning, and then maybe on 117, sort of the periphery, that strong north flow that's going to develop may bring down something. Uh, Montana, 19, 113. That's the Pacific Northwest. Again, a lot of the action will kind of contract and shift up to the Pacific Northwest. So 110 through 113. Yeah, heavy precip for sure. But the rain snow line is going to be an issue at a lot of resorts. Terrier, BC, it gets warm there too, 111 and 112. All right, let's talk a little bit about, just quickly here, the forecast radar. So this is 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Friday, January 9th today. There's our departing low. There's your residual uh, little bit of snow up there across the northern Rockies. Let me push this into the future. So there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. Everything's really dry now. So this is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday. By this point, it should be very obvious that high pressure is building in across the west. High and dry, as we say. There's 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard on Saturday. Look where the flow is here. So this is 5 a.m. on Sunday, Mountain Standard. The entire flow is way up here. The trajectory is way up into the Pacific Northwest and especially B.C., Canada for quite some time. Uh, I'm just going to keep running this out. I mean, there's really not much change here. 
So there's 11 a.m. Again, everything's across the Pacific Northwest Northern Tier in Canada, and that's it. Okay, let's talk uh, atmospheric pressure anomalies. So this is Wednesday 114. Um, so there's our big, massive high pressure uh, across a lot of the uh, the west right there. And that's, that's guys, that's probably uh, three standard deviations above the norm right there with warm, dry weather across a lot of the west. So that's 114. Here's 116. This was that possible pattern shift on the eastern periphery, and you can kind of see it. So there's high. There's your high pressure, and then you can kind of see this fast north flow. There might be some action coming down out of Canada through Montana, clipping parts of Wyoming, parts of Colorado. But today versus the way this looked a few days ago, this is trending much weaker at this point, unfortunately. So it extends out our dry period. This is 120. I really hope this doesn't happen because look at all these warm colors here across the west. That's a big high pressure dome still sitting across the west, kind of um, deflecting any sort of a storm system that might move in. That's 120. That's way down the road. Let me do a contrast. So here's AI for 116. It has a lot of agreement with what we just talked about here. Fast north flow. Um, and, and that was the same on the operational. The two are kind of similar. There's a, some slight differences, but even it agrees that if there's any impact from this, essentially these lower pressures, it, it mainly will just sort of brush Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. Not what we were really hoping for. Here's total precipitation over the next seven days. Um, and notice what happens. All of it goes up here into the Pacific Northwest, BC. A tiny bit slides down on that north flow. But look at all of this area here, California, Nevada, Utah. There's almost nothing over the next seven days. Here's 10 to 1 snow for the same time period. Again, it's all sort of up here where you see the deep purple, that's at least six inches. Bright pink would be a foot, and the white's like two feet. And yeah, there's a couple of places that open up at two feet, but I'll tell you, this is really light. Look at the little bit of snow that comes down through Montana, Wyoming directed through Colorado. There's just not much there. Here's seven day total precip for the southwest. And again, mainly dry in here. There's a little bit of precip right here. And that's that's within the next 24 hours. And then it really dries out. So let's look at, um, yeah, let's go AI snow plume. So for Berthet Pass and Jackson Hole, um, it, it really does agree with the idea that we're in for high pressure and dry weather. This only uh, cranks out three inches over the next 15 days at Berthoud and three, three and a half inches at Jackson Hole. That's a huge shift from where we've been. So that's what AI is thinking at this point. Um, let me show you what uh, my forecast is here through the 16th. So through the close of business on 116, these are grand totals. Um, so big time snow up at Alyeska, at least a four foot sort of uh, snowfall up there. And you can see, I mean, this is kind of the storm track right in here where most of the action comes up over the top, spills down through on that northwest uh, north flow through Montana, Wyoming, clipping at best brushing um, parts of the Rockies. There's just not a lot of moisture there. And so you've got your big high pressure setting right here, and that's going to be the tough thing to dislodge. It's going to be there for quite some time. I mean, we're just talking light snow accumulations on the periphery. And that'll, that's probably going to do it. Let's look, at, let's look at the northeast here. So uh, seven day total snow, deep purple, six inches. Bright pink would be a foot. Uh, and, and again, there's just, you know, you're looking at some storm snow here. Not a ton. I think there's probably a, a little tiny bullseye over Jay Peak and Mount Tremblant. In fact, here's my uh, forecast for that area. Uh, a couple of double digit uh, numbers there. Jay Peak, Tremblant, and Snow Ridge. Everybody else is less. These are totals through 116, so three to six is a pretty common range for most of the resorts up there. All right, we'll end on the uh, the big western map here through 116. Final storm exits today, and then we're in for a warmer, drier period for sure. You're where your better snow is going to be up here, Baker North, because of how warm it's going to be. Places like Crystal, Snoqualmie, Stevens, Timberline, Bachelor, too warm through most of that period to see big snow. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.